Hello everyone, I am Dr. Dhanya. In today's session, I am going to share with you some important topics from obstetrics for your AMC part 1 examination. And uh, we will also have one MCQ discussion after this. The MCQ I have taken from AMC handbook itself. So without much delay, let's start our session. The important or high yielding topics from your maternal health are the first and most important one, normal antenatal care. Because a proper antenatal care is very important for a healthy pregnancy. And in Australia, there are specific guidelines to support that. So you must follow those guidelines uh, for answering the questions related to antenatal care. And the second one is antenatal counselling. For a proper antenatal counselling, you should be thorough with the uh, normal maternal adaptations in pregnancy the third one early pregnancy breeding and the related topics like miscarriage ectopic hydatidy from mole the fourth one antepartum hemorrhage so it include placenta previa abrevisio placenta and vasa previa the fifth one medical disorders in pregnancy uh, when it comes to medical disorders in pregnancy the hypertension and diabetes in pregnancy are the important topics so you should focus on these topics first and learn it well and uh, you should follow the Australian guidelines updated ones for uh, their management and the investigations uh, and the other topics are anemia in pregnancy, cardiac disorders, jaundice, hypermesis and thyroid disorders, epilepsy, thrombocytopenia, DVT, SLE and genetic disorders. Sixth one, complications specific to pregnancy like RH isoimmunization, multiple pregnancy related complications, cervical incom incompetence, lycra abnormalities, premature rupture of membrane and fetal growth restriction. Seventh one, related to labor, normal or abnormal labor in which third stage management is very very important when it comes to malpresentation breach delivery is important uh, when it comes to monitoring uh, this include uh, both maternal and fetal monitoring and in which ctg is very important uh, amc will ask questions on ctg as image based questions uh, then preterm labor uh, when it comes to postpartum hemorrhage, both primary, secondary, postpartum hemorrhage and its management is very important. Then other emergencies like meconium aspiration, uh, cord prolapse, shoulder dystocia, uterine inversion, trauma in pregnancy. The last topic, postnatal care, normal and abnormal perperium and breastfeeding, contraception. So these are the high yielding topics or important topics from your maternal health. So you should focus on these topics first when you start reading maternal health. And uh, after that you can do the questions and while doing the recalls you can uh, concentrate on other uh, topics also. Uh, so that's about uh, the important topics now we can move towards mcq discussion i will read the question a patient who has had three successive spontaneous abortions attend at 12 weeks of gestation in her fourth pregnancy her menstrual cycles have been regular and of 28 days duration just prior to presenting for assessment, she passed a moderate amount of blood with clots per vaginum and had some intermittent lower abdominal pain. On vaginal examination, the cervical canal admitted one finger readily and bimanual palpation showed a uterus compatible in size with a pregnancy of only 8 weeks duration. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in the management? Option A, pregnancy test, B, serum beta HCG level, C, curettage, D, vaginal ultrasound, and E, cervical ligation. 
See, this is a pattern of AMC MCQs. This is the stem of the question and there will be five options. So, you should select the best choice from this. Some options may be partially correct, but you should choose one of the best answer. So, from this question, it is clear that the patient is pregnant and she is in her fourth pregnancy and at 12 weeks of gestation and she had three successive spontaneous abortions in the past and her menstrual cycles were regular and she had history of blood clots passage per vaginum with uh, some intermittent lower abdominal pain on examination uh, the cervix is dilated admitted one finger and uterine size is only 8 weeks so the first important uh, step in answering this type of question is to make a correct clinical diagnosis so for that we need differentials so what all differentials come to your mind now the first one miscarriage The second one, ectopic. Third one, cervical incompetence. So these are the differentials come to our mind. How many types of miscarriages are there? Six types threatened, incomplete, complete, missed, septic, inevitable. So, we need to make a correct clinical diagnosis from these differentials. Before that, I will give you an overall idea about miscarriages. In threatened abortion, the cervix is closed and there is no passage of fetal tissue. So, the uterine size is corresponding to the period of gestation. In inevitable, the cervix is open. Here the pregnancy loss is inevitable and is about to occur. So the complete product of conception are still remain in the uterine cavity. So the uterine size is corresponding to the period of gestation. In incomplete, uh, the cervix is open and there are uh, passage of products of conception but in uterus some products are still there so here the uterine size is less than the period of gestation due to loss of some products in complete abortion the cervix is closed due to complete passage of uh, fetal products uterus is contracted and the uterine cavity is empty in septic abortion, there will be fever with chills and it is usually due to staph aureus and there will be purulent cervical discharge on examination. The cervix is open here and uterine tenderness is present. Sometimes there may be no passage of products or sometimes there will be incomplete passage of products. This table also showing uh, different types of miscarriages that we have already discussed. But here you can see missed abortion. Missed abortion is usually an ultrasound diagnosis of non-viable intrauterine pregnancy in the absence of vaginal bleeding. 
what about recurrent miscarriages if more than 3 successive miscarriages are there then it is called recurrent miscarriage i hope now you get an idea about miscarriages so let's start to rule out our differentials so what about the differential ectopic in ectopic usually there is a localized abdominal pain and the cervix is usually closed also the uterine size will be smaller than that that of eight weeks of gestation so it is most unlikely option here what about cervical incompetence this is also most unlikely because even though the cervix is dilated until the product expulsion the uterine size will be corresponding to the period of gestation so now we need to find out what type of miscarriage is that it is not a septic abortion why there is no history of fever or uterine tenderness anything so we can rule out septic abortion it is not a missed abortion because the cervix is closed in missed abortion and the bleeding may not be there in threatened abortion uh, the uterine size is similar to period of gestation and the cervix is closed so that option also can be ruled out in inevitable abortion the cervix is open but the uterine size is corresponding to the period of gestation now the two options are incomplete and complete abortion in complete abortion usually the cervix is closed and the uterus is contracted but if the complete abortion had just occurred there may be a possibility of open cervix and there may be possibility of uterine size less than the period of gestation so it may be an answer here so the remaining option is incomplete abortion uh, it is the most likely diagnosis here because in incomplete abortion the cervix is open and uterine size is smaller than the period of gestation so we need to differentiate between incomplete abortion and complete abortion so how can we differentiate between incomplete and complete abortion from these options using ultrasound so which type of ultrasound would you prefer at 12 weeks of gestation transvaginal ultrasound so the answer here is option d so in ultrasound if the products of conception are still remain there then we need curettage as next step but if there is no products or the uterine cavity is empty this option is not necessary this is not cervical incompetence so we don't need cervical ligation and here in this scenario it is clearly explained that the patient is pregnant so we don't need any pregnancy test or serum beta SAG level suppose if the question is like a patient came with a bleeding per vaginum and abdominal pain after three months of amenorrhea then we need to rule out the pregnancy first so in that case the pregnancy test or option a will be the correct answer so the correct 
option uh, in this question is option D vaginal ultrasound so that's it for today if you want uh, more MCQ discussions please let me know so that I can prepare for that and also if you have any suggestions or queries please add it in the comment section and if you like the contents please like share and subscribe and thank you for watching